Hello, friends and homeschoolers. Uh, Uncle Larry coming at you with a unboxing video of sorts, I suppose. Um, uh, friends at LA Vintage Gear. Uh, I told you guys I was waiting for a guitar to show up, and here it is. It's a 61 SG Special. Quite a nice instrument. Um, uh, you know, it's always a, a weird, unnatural act buying a guitar sight unseen. You just... It's so weird to purchase a guitar. I try to ask a million questions, you know, when I'm doing things and find out any history I can on any guitar I'm buying. I look at detailed photos. I, my main questions are what's the weight? Um, you know, how, how heavy is it? What's it play like? Blah, blah, blah. You know, a lot of things you can ask. Um, is the thing supposed to be all original? Any, cr any cracks or breaks? So, so far, I haven't played this at all. I immediately took the strings off it because uh, I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. But I noticed right away when I opened the case that, opened the box, that it had an original 61 SG pebble case with yellow inside, which the guitar shouldn't have. This is a damn nice case and they're worth a fortune. So, so thank you, Cliff. Th this guitar probably originally came with a uh, soft shell case, molded case, you know. Um, but that case right there that it came with is, is worth some money, and uh, that's a cool thing because uh, everybody loves an old Pebble SG case. So the guy that owned this guitar before me is a legendary uh, record producer and a friend of mine uh, uh, who shall remain nameless. But he he said when I talked to him on the phone about this instrument that he never played it much, and when I opened the case, I, I immediately saw why. Uh, the bridge pickup was super low, so I just raised it up with some foam, take the pickup out, put some foam under there. You're always going to end up with a bit of uh, exposed cover there, but I don't mind that. Um, but like I told you guys, with P90s, as Bubba taught me long ago, you got to get the whole body of the pickup up. You can't just raise the pole pieces. It doesn't do anything. I've experimented with that, and Bubba was definitely right. Um, raising the, the pole pieces on a P90 does nothing. So you got to jack the whole body up. So I don't know if this is right yet. I'll find out when I put some strings on it, but we'll see. Uh, the guys did a beautiful pack job. They took the um, pickup selector cap off, the the you know the strap button. That's all in the case pocket. You know they kind of went a little overkill on the pack job, which I appreciate. Beautiful bubble wrap. Uh, everything was really nicely though. The, the key to shipping a guitar is is what happens inside the case, right? These guys have really have it down. Um, there was lots of packing inside the case, so the guitar doesn't move inside the case. People don't realize how important that is on a, on a shipping job. Um, and these guys, you know, you always do little things like never leave the pickup selector in the middle when you're shipping a guitar because it'll get poked through the guitar. Little things, and these guys know how to ship a guitar. I noticed that the um, you know, the seventh fret um, inlay is missing. It might be in the case. Who knows? Um, not a big deal. Um, I don't see it, but it might be here somewhere. Um, but man, so far, my feelings are this is a cool guitar. It's super lightweight, um, as advertised. Um, it seems, you know, I, I only played it for about a second, but it's got a lot going for it right out of the gate. I mean, look. Beautiful neck profile. Um, uh, all looks right to me. Doesn't look like any monkey business around the tuners. No cracks. I did notice a, a little bit of a, uh, that you'd call it, like a, a run in the lacquer right around here. So we can't even see it on the, um, on the camera. But, you know, these these budget model Gibsons, a lot of, a lot of times we're not, built as carefully as the upper end line instruments. You'll see little anomalies like this on juniors and things like this. Um, you know, little things that they let go, they wouldn't let go on a Les Paul or an ES-175 or something like that. Cause that was, more, they're more pimped out Primo models, right? So what I did was I raised this, took the pickup out, put some foam under there, screw the um, pole pieces down into the pickup, which is where you want them. I'm gonna do that to this one as well. I'll put some strings on it. Uh, they were already kind enough to put a Music City bridge on it, which is very cool. 
originals in the case pocket. Frets are kind of knackered, but you know, what's, what do you expect? This is a, what, 39 plus 23. This is a old guitar. What is that, 39 plus 23, 62? Is that right? Damn, my math's weird. This is an old guitar. Uh, neck heel looks good. Don't see any weirdness there. So we'll string it up, intonate it, and see what it's got. I'll bet it kicks ass. We shall see. I'll let you know in a minute. Alrighty, part two. Um, just got done adjusting the intonation, strung it up. Uh, I had to take the treble side back a good ways, move the bass side forward a good ways. Now the intonation is dead on. I got the uh, pickup at the perfect height, as you can see. I might lower those neck poles a little bit. But uh, check this out. How do I show you this? I wish I could hold this here. Intonation is dead on with the with the music city savvy. Um, let's see, I had to take the old strings off. It had the luthier knot. <laughs> I had to deal with that. And uh, but let's give it a give it a, a whack and put everything back on the strap pins. I think we're ready to go. I'll go plug it in and see what we have here, friends. Okay. Okay, friends. Well, I brought it in the house which has air conditioning, unlike the garage. Um, it's had to adjust the tuning a little bit because as you know, when a guitar gets cold or any time air conditioning vent blows on a guitar, it immediately goes sharp. But listen to that. Holy hell. I don't know what the hell was going on with these guys back in in these days, but these instruments they were making are just unbelievable. I mean, right in the middle of the golden age of Gibson and Kalamazoo, I mean, the, everything about it is just perfect. I mean, the neck profile, the beautiful wide 61 neck with the sort of shallow dressed away um, feel, it's just wonderful. Acoustically. Music City Bridge definitely helping. Listen to the tuning. Great. Okay, so here's the pickups. Uh, here's the bridge. Townsend's SG on live at Leeds. Let's see. Volume's on about eight. Thank you. 
okay? Wow. Beefy. Holy shit, listen to the mid range. <laughs> Something. Okay, wow. Okay, here's the next pickup. On 10. Maybe I'll go to sleep and see if I can play that tomorrow. Man, the balance is really nice. Alright, here's the middle sound. Well, let's see if the neck pickup cleans up. I'm gonna go down to six. up even better than than the bridge i mean wow i can't tell you how good this neck plays wow okay here's the middle sound everything up okay sound was with both, both volumes on six. Okay, that, that's the magic right there. There it is. If I was in the studio, I would take whatever Marshall I was playing through with that sound, turn the presence all the way up. Check it out. I was hoping I would like it, and I absolutely love it. It's, it's just wonderful. I mean, I can't find anything wrong with it. 
I don't even care about these frets being mowed down. It plays amazing. Listen to that. All right. All right, friends, thanks for watching. This is this is probably going to be, uh, you get used to this one. You'll probably be seeing this a bit on the show. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something about how to ship a guitar, maybe. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.